What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the war recap to CWO Premiere Week 2, Forge from Steel versus Sons of Anarchy. FFS walking away with the victory. 86-82 to 82 was the final score, and also winning on total destruction, 93.7%. On our side, 93.5% total destruction on their side. I want. I just want to give a big shout out from Town Hall 11, Town Hall 10, down to Town Hall 9. The activity level for this war was through the roof as far as the different planning going on in Discord, the sketches everyone was putting in, as well as the voice channels were completely lit. All kinds of activity. Everybody was helping out, getting these plans drawn up, getting these bases built. So big shout out to everybody on the FFS side and Sons of Anarchy did bring it. It was, we did get the victory by a star differential of four. However, they did almost triple quite a few of our town hall tens. So nothing to take away from SOA. They did a tremendous job this war. Nothing to feel bad about. They're going to be doing very well in the CWL this season. At any rate, Let's go ahead, since this is a war recap, let's go ahead and check out what they did to our side of the map. As far as the 11s go, they did struggle a little bit. However, they did manage to two-star all of our Town Hall 11s with Town Hall 10s, and they had decent percentage too as well. Uh, where they really struggled is they did not have any 10v10s. They did not have any 10v10s, and they did have two dip fails. And that was pretty much the make or break of this war. They did have to dip a few of our nines. I believe they scouted some of our Town Hall 10s, but they did have to dip a few nines. So our nines did give them uh, a little bit of a headache, but they did get the job done. Now, as far as their side of the map, believe it or not, we it was not the best percentage but we did get all of their 11s two starred with our Town Hall 10s. And not only that, we did go four for four. You'll see right there, uh, PSC did get 50% on number one. We had a 56%, which was actually the last hit, just to increase our percentage a little bit. Uh, we had Goofy Babe, he did get 56. We had Clashing Titan get 52, and Hulk got 53. PSC actually did go two for two. I did, did want to give him a shout out. He did go two for two on the 10v11. Uh, he also hit number two, which was also 50%, right on the money. Um, so our total destruction was not as high as it usually is, but regardless, we did go four for four. Now, as far as our dips, our 11v10 dip game, we only had one dip fail, so we did go seven for eight, which was absolutely epic. And we had three 10v10s this war, and in a breakdown like this, as you see, we did clear all 10s um, on the map. So the only four stars left up were obviously from the Town Hall 11s. And right here, we I will show you guys the replay. I did have a 10v10 this war, so we'll we'll cover that a little bit later. And Goofy Babe getting the six pack uh, using Fam Ho. He did triple number 13 and number 14, which we will be covering a little later uh, after we show a few of the Town Hall 9 replays. Uh, we did clear 9s with 9s. However, we did do a, a little trade. We basically traded a few scouts for two dips. So we did dip two of their Town Hall 9s, but we got three scouts out of it. So it was a, a pretty even trade, and it did help us clear the tens that much faster so without further ado that's enough talking as far as the re uh, the recap goes let's go ahead and check out some attacks we did have some really nice attacks this war that i did want to cover starting off with nasty nate three star uh gonna be doing this with a stoned lalo as he is going to be starting here over on the bottom right-hand side of the base. Uh, just dropping down a few wizards, just setting that funnel as he does have bowlers in the clan castle. And you guys know how important it is to get those bowlers to go into the base. So we're going to get a tremendous value uh, from his kill squad here. Goes in and drops down the third golem. 
queen and wizards over at three o'clock just creating that funnel just trimming that side uh just again just shedding up uh, setting up the show for the bowlers being nice and patient not rushing this attack so goes in drops down the bowlers they're on the elixir storage and queen snipes the town hall and drops that jump spell leading into the expo compartment which pretty much opens up to obviously those three air defenses getting the expo getting the cc here it comes out does have a poison waiting for it but it's going to be getting rid of a lot inside that compartment there was a lot of air targeting defenses goes in drops down his heal and his rage so just got a really good value from his kill squad and he does have um, a camp hound that he just dropped at seven o'clock and is just flooding these defenses with these loons goes in drops down a haste as the expo is locked on to the hound now hound goes ahead and pops right there but you'll see bowlers made it all the way to the other side of the map bowlers end up taking out the air defense loons under that rage go ahead and take out the tesla farm and they're actually that was the last defense right there or there are still no he does still have that archer tower that the loons are but it's pretty much gonna be clean up does have that one loon targeting that archer tower so just a really good job to nasty nate queen walking around the base just trimming all that whole side getting rid of all that trash so just a really good job breaking this base down doing it with a stone lalo haven't seen one of those in a while so nice hit to nasty nate three star All right, now we're going to go ahead and check out Maza Soccer's hit as he's going to be doing this with a CB Lalo. And this base actually was a little pain in the ass for us. It did take a few hits and it almost, it almost kind of looks like the, like the Taylor a little bit, but looks can be deceiving. I'll tell you what. So he's, he's going to be starting up here at 12 o'clock doing it with a CB entry right here. Goes in and drops down his wall breakers. Good patience on that. Did set up a nice funnel for his heroes to go into this base. So he went ahead and took out enemy Archer Queen. Did drop a poison on her to slow her down. And CC is going to be coming out any second now as the Queen Altar comes down. Had a nice poison there waiting for the enemy Clan Castle troops. Caught them right in that poison in that sweet spot right there so queen goes ahead and takes out the archer tower she's gonna go ahead and lock onto this baby drag few shots it is down and just being nice and patient uh patient right here pops the ability to try to work through these skellies that you know doesn't want to take too much time on this but you'll see after that elixir or that dark elixir drill went down Archer Queen did snipe one of the four air defenses. So he's got three air defenses left. So he's starting his Lalo over at nine o'clock. Does have a heal over on that nasty Tesla farm with that expo. Nice position of that air sweeper to Rio on this one. So go ahead, I had to drop that heal, work through that nine o'clock compartment. Does have a CC hound. And a compound working on the other two air defenses has a nice haste once that archer tower goes down had a really good loon split so the fourth and final air defense was finally down he's got pups cleaning up this map all over on the left hand side and just a few defenses left as that archer tower was the last air targeting defense to go down and that was pretty much it right there so awesome job to Maza Soccer breaking that down, tweaking the plan a little bit, and getting the three star on that base. So good job to Maza with the CB Lalo. Okay, this is going to be our last and final Town Hall 9 replay as we do have quite a bit of heavy hitter action to cover on this war. You guys know how much I love old school attacks. So Slaba My Gob really brought it the, uh, on this one. He did drop one barb to lure the CC, as it was an easy CC pull. Now, he does drop two archers. There's a one-finger drop on two archers. Doing the healer trick, getting that hound. Get that freaking hound out of here. We do not want to deal with that thing. So now he's going to be coming in here with a CB entry, similar to Maz's. So he's going to be starting down here at 6 o'clock, just starting a nice, easy, soft funnel right here. Wall breakers pop the wall. Queen's going to be coming in here. It looked like for a second King was going to be walking around, but he does have the Archer Queen, the enemy Archer Queen in the corner of his eye. So he wraps around. Poison slowing her down. So enemy Queen is already down. 
no clan castle to deal with as slob does have the old school healer trick i i, re I really love that look at that go over there okay so gonna be starting his hounds nice and early the Archer Queen didn't even get to that air defense yet before he started his Hound Loon portion. So pop uh, the ability just to work through it. That air defense is down. Goes ahead and drops a Rage a little early, but still going to be enough to get through that farm, that Tesla farm and Wizard Tower farm. So Loon's now, now inside the Rage, just working through this base. First Camp Hound pops. Uh, does have the CC Hound over at 11 o'clock doing a nice job tanking everything. And... Other than the Expo and the Air Defense, the only other air targeting defenses he has to worry about right now is the Archer Towers down there over on the bottom right-hand side. But he just has way too many loons. Nice rage and haste that that group of loons caught. And those Archer Towers cannot fire fast enough. Even has a swag, haste, and a poison uh, that he has in the bag. But if you'll see right here, there is a little pesky troll Tesla up there at 12 o'clock, but he still has plenty of time. They even catch a little uh, riot out there, <laughs> drop the swag poison on the troll Tesla. So good call on that one. But he just has so many pups left up. He's not going to have any trouble cleaning up this base. Even swag, uh, Swag's a wall breaker. So Slob and my gob doing it with a healer trick. So if you guys are cleaning up any bases and it's an easy clan castle pull to not have to deal with an enemy hound. I mean, it's only 14 camp space uh, for the healer. To, so you're looking at 16 camp space to not deal with. Uh, enemy CC at Town Hall 9. Definitely think about that when you guys are planning these cleanup hits. So awesome job to slob of my gob on that one. Now, let's go ahead and get into the heavy hitter action. Okay, so again, Goobs getting it with the six pack, uh, 10v10. Now, you might not recognize the name Fam Ho. This is usually Captain Crunch's account, but Goobs was running it this war. And he's doing it. I mean, just look down at the troop bar doing it with bitch. So had a nice bowler trade. If you guys missed it, drop one bowler to eliminate two mortars that were on each side of the base, on each flank here. Starting over on the bottom left, has witches and bowlers on each flank. Has the CC bowlers going through the core of this. Hound loon coming out of the enemy CC. Does have a jump. Did not deal with wall breakers. Did have a jump leading all his troops in. Uh, bowlers, witches, his heroes, obviously, and his second jump connecting to that Inferno Tower on the right-hand side, so not going to be too much of an issue. And the core of this base, I mean, it was just completely wiped out. Enemy Hound does pop, but he does have some witches in there as well as his enemy, or as well as his Archer Queen. And he still has ability, so Pup's not going to be an issue whatsoever. And Again, when you guys are doing these bitch attacks, it's so crucial and so important to have witches and bowlers on the sides of these bases trimming these defenses. And I know we displayed a couple of these in another video that we had uh, showing different styles of attacks that we're seeing at Town Hall 10 and bringing it with the bitch to the battlefield in CWO Premier. Um... It's looking really, really good. I mean, it's not its not just Lalo anymore, which is what we were only seeing. Um, you know, it, it might kind of look like the attack is petered out, but if you look closely, uh, does still goes and pops his Archer Queen ability, and there's really only one defense left that's really going to do too much harm, which is that Archer Tower. That is it. And if you take a look, has all kinds of skellies, still has three witches up, even the little the little bowler that could uh, that has that has survived this whole attack. So really good job to Goozy Babe. This was a cleanup. We had a guy I believe get. Uh, I think it was um, yeah. It was an, uh, we had another guy hit this base. I think he had a ninety five percent. So with just a couple spell tweaks, Goose was able to get the three star. So just an awesome job doing it with bitch. So great hit to Goozy Babe. All right, so now for the second hit, doing a completely different attack. Damn near doing a mass loon on this one. We have Gooves with the second uh, 10v10 three-star um, in this war. So he's doing it with baby drags, just starting to funnel 
um, over there at 11 and 2 o'clock, just setting up a nice funnel as he's basically just going to be doing a, a suicide hero here in order to grab that air defense as well as an inferno tower. So uh, Barracks goes down, goes ahead and drops four wall breakers. They get the wall broken. So heroes are, are going to be heading inside the base. Uh, hits a double giant bomb, not going to be an issue to a king. So no, and he did pop the ability after the bombs went off. So getting every ounce of value from these troops uh, with those little barbarians. So after the Inferno Tower went down, already starting the Hound Loon portion over on the upper right hand side, goes ahead and drops a couple haste just to get through that Wizard Tower farm. And that Tesla, those Teslas, followed up by a Rage. So two air defenses already down as the loons are making their way through the core of this base, followed up by another haste. And he did drop a, he dropped two skelly spells on the queen, one of his own and one max skelly donated, has a freeze right when the freeze ended loons were right over the second inferno tower goes go they go ahead and one shot that and they the loons end up pathing behind the air sweeper just completely wrecked this base even has a giant i don't even know what he was bringing that giant for maybe he was bringing the giant for cleanup and he even dropped uh some loons over here uh for cleanup and so his giant's actually doing some cleanup but uh that enemy loon is going to be targeting it at any rate just completely smash this bray uh smash this base even had two loons uh that he more or less swagged uh has minions over at three o'clock uh just getting through that town hall so just completely wrecked it so that's two cwl wars in a row where goose has six pack so he is seeing the ball very well right now so keep up the good work, man. We all appreciate it. Getting these plans in. Um, you guys have been doing an awesome job. So big shout out to Goofy Babe. All right. So now for, and you guys, I mean, if you guys don't know, maybe you don't, uh, typically I don't even show my attacks. Um, you know, even when I was at Town Hall 9, even if it was a good attack, you know, I like showing other, you know, I like showing other people's attacks. But, it, you know, when when you get a 10v10, I guess you really don't have a choice, right? So, at any rate, I was running the Blazing Mist account for this war as he did get tied up uh, towards the end of the war. So, I went ahead and did his attacks. So, basically, what I'm doing here is I drop my queen down at uh, 6 o'clock, followed up by a haste on each side of the base, dropping four loons, getting an air defense and an archer tower. King over at three o'clock, just doing a little king bowler kill squad to eliminate the fourth and final air defense. So just got, I got a really good value for just those four loons by eliminating an air defense and an archer tower on each side there over at about eight o'clock and two o'clock. So the funnel was already created. It's so not only did I eliminate those air targeting defenses, but it sets up better pathing for the inferno tower to get to the inferno tower. And I pretty much have all spells, um, or at least eight spells I'm using just for my drag. So as they're coming in, I drop a rage just to get through the queen and that inferno tower and, um, that Tesla farm that was over by the, the, the king stall. So go ahead and drop, I drop my second rage just to work through that Tesla farm right there, followed up by a heal, keep the drags nice and healed up, two loons on that archer tower over at three o'clock. So got a pretty good value right there. And I do have three drags approaching that wizard tower farm and that's where i dropped my third and final raid just to work through there and if you look at this base we couldn't believe i mean how quickly the base went down um just basically the only air targeting defense left is that inferno tower and you know with the damage buff and the the speed buff that these drags have received i'm telling you guys a lot of these bases that might be anti-lalo aren't necessarily anti-drag so just something to consider and you know i i think i planned this i don't know maybe 10 maybe 15 minutes in total uh plan this attack swag to poison so just something to 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 keep on the lookout um big drags give, give them a shot
Uh, I couldn't believe that I tripled this base. Uh, felt really good. Chat went absolutely insane. So that was my 10v10 um, helping out wherever I can in this war. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Could not believe it. So at any rate, that is pretty much going to do it for this war recap. Forge from Steel versus Sons of Anarchy taking the victory. FFS taking the victory 86 to 82. Also winning on Total Destruction. I personally, you know, I'm speaking for the clan and for myself. We wish nothing but the best for Sons of Anarchy with the rest of their season. Keep wrecking it. Uh, again, they did have a few of our 10s. They had, I believe they had a, a couple that were like 95%, a couple 99s. Very, very close. Um, but we did get the four-star differential on this one. I'm, you know, just a big shout out to Town Hall 9s. You guys have just completely been wrecking it these last few weeks. Keep up the good work. Our 10v10 game, I mean, we are averaging, I mean, two to three 10v10s uh, per war. So keep the plans coming. You guys have been doing an awesome job. And our 11s only having one dip fill going seven for eight. Not too shabby whatsoever. So that was pretty much going to do it for this war recap video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the attacks. We were having tons of fun. So getting the victory on this one. CWL premiere week two is now wrapped up. We have our next war is against three point park. Uh, next weekend. So stay tuned for that. But that will do it for now. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing the channel lately. It's it's kind of been blowing up, so it's a lot of fun. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Mm -hmm.